Saints versus the Giants is going to be a corker of a game as well. The Saints are finally back into the finals. Ross, the boss, has come back. They didn't fall away like they did last year. GWS, you would almost say that they have been the inform in the back half of the season. And what Adam Kingsley has done for this mob, I absolutely love it. Don't worry about the orange Ferrari. This is the blue collar tsunami. I'm taking the Giants this week. Uh, J Dog is looking after the faint. Um, and for a twist of fate, I will be going, even though I'm the away team, I will be going first on this one. All right. The Giants, they absolutely love to dominate possession. Over the last five weeks, they've out-dominated their uh, possession count by 33. And when you have a look at some of the names running around, Green, Cornelio, Whitfield, Kelly, absolutely killing it at the moment. And they are magnificent. They've actually got a lot more form back in than they previously had. Remember when they were going a little bit average over the last couple of uh, couple of seasons? They've got their mojo back, and I put a massive hand on the back of Adam Kingsley for getting that one all organized. They've been out tackling. So it's not just getting the ball. They've been out tackling. The pressure factor, rating over six tackles more than their opposition over the last five weeks means that they're not the Ferraris. They are monster trucks. They will drive over you and then get the ball and then go downtown. And you know what? If you think you're going to be able to stop them, and outscore them, go to their back line. They are measly. This is something that GWS have not been known for. They've been very, very good in the midfield. Their four lines have been sensational. But their back line, led by Sam Taylor down there, have done an amazing job in 2023. They're um, outscoring their oppositions by three goals over that amount of time as well, which for the GWS, uh, you would have thought, okay, well, without Jeremy Cameron there, who's going to be their goals? When you got Lloyd down there, when you've got... Bedford, unfortunately, is not playing. Jesse Hogan's had a new lease on life as well, too. But you've got my love child. We know him as the All-Australian captain. I love him as Toby Green. When he is setting it alight down there, talk about the most destructive player. This guy could turn a final series on its head. And I reckon he is due. He's been a bit quiet in the last few, but he is ready and rocking to dominate this one against the Saints as well, too. They get more metres gained. They get more inside 50s than anybody. So they're getting the ball hard. They're running it in there more than anybody else. They're scoring more than their opposition. They're contesting. And then if you try and get it into their forward line, mate, they shut you down just like 5 p.m., 5 a.m. drinks down at the tunnel. Last drinks, last drinks. You've been shut off, my friend. I'm going to GWS to win this by three goals. And unfortunately, they are going to be sending the Saints to hell well peps i'd love to agree with you but you know you're coming up against the saints which are the defensive uh defensive 50 strength they are a top four team defensively in the comp so yes you've got your little love child you've got your little toby green and your jesse hogan and your daniel I, Lloyds. I, I, it's not sorry your turn. calm down <laughs> but but St. Kilda, the things that go unheralded for, they are slightly above average in centre clearances. They are slightly above average in defensive scoring. You've got Sinclair. You've got the, like, this is, this is a Ross team. Look at the halfback line. Cordy, Zach Sinclair, Nasiah Wanganin Malira. Uh, Nasiah Wanganin Malira. You've got Max King, who could be coming back. You've got some fantastic form. The, the, the re-emergence of the Phoenix, of Brad Crouch himself. This team here, do not underestimate the St. Kilda Football Club. The Why Nots, though. We need to go look at the Why Nots. Why won't the Saints win? Well, the GWS are sort of um, sort of like Seabiscuit. <laughs> Nobody expected much from them this year. They looked at them and thought, oh, they're a bit measly. They're not that good. They've got a new coach. They got a heart of gold. You know, they have bounced significantly from where they were last year and probably with the Leon Cameron half year, blah, blah, blah. You know, we know we know that we know what, what Richmond did to this after the grand final. They were really they were down, they were trodden, they lost a coach, they had Cogs who wasn't playing well, the the spiritual captain. We know Phil Davis had retired but didn't retire during the year, but 
They have bounced back well. And it is all around the green machine. He is the concern. We know to, we know Jesse, uh, Jesse Hogan has had a fantastic form towards the end of the year. Um, but Toby Green really is that is that barometer for that team. Um, the one stat, though, Pep, so no one ever talks about this stat, and I think it's probably the most underrated stat that, um, that no one's ever no, no one's ever going to talk about, is when St Kilda play on the 9th of September... They are two and zero. No one mentions that when they won their game back in nineteen thirty nine and nineteen seventy two. <laughs> no one mentions that stat, but really, that's the that's the stat that's going to be the winner. They don't lose when they play on the 9th of September. So for yeah, mine, it's not bad for you. <laughs> for so for mine, <laughs> for mine, it's St Kilda, and this probably is going to be the game of the round. Wow, St. wow. St Kilda by three goals. Mate, I tell you what, out of so far of our mini skirt previews, like I said, long enough to cover the essentials, short enough to keep you interested, eight minutes worth. That game has caused everything on the chat ski as well too. And some of the names, I'll tell you what, the word must be getting around because everybody is an up. GWS will be an upset. Um, GWS dropped the ball when they failed to stomp on the Blues' neck and secure a home final. Yeah, you probably got that one there. The Giants flag, 26ers, a great price. Lee Mack has joined us back again. Uh, interesting enough, caught up with Lee Mack at the 30th uh, school reunion. He hasn't changed. He is still a superstar as well. He also, I think, got uh, butters at 50s at the at the uh, Brownlow medal at the start of the year. So he's going to be loving it. But he also told you, j Dog, get off his uh, turf uh, when you're talking about horse racing, please. Just don't. Just don't. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Avoid okay. it. Uh, by the way, question for you. If you could punch one player in the face, who would it be? Toby Green or Bailey Smith? <laughs> um, I mean, what a stupid question. Because if I punch Toby Green, he'll punch me back twice as hard. And Bailey Smith, I'll get my hand caught in his mullet, and I don't want that to occur. So I wouldn't punch either of them because I don't believe in violence. You are talking shit. 